Hey guys, welcome back to Tommy Legends and once again thank you for stopping by. So in today's video I'm going to show you a new arrival which is a Tamiya Mad Fighter on the DT01 chassis. So in this video we're going to do quite a lot of things. We're going to give you a brief description of it, a little bit of a timeline of it, then we're going to take it out and run it and then we'll come back in and I want to go through my plans, my future plans for this and get your feedback. So this car was actually donated to me by um, a lovely a lovely gentleman actually called David. Um, he contacted me, he put this car on eBay and for whatever reason he thought, you know what, instead of selling it, I'll uh, send it over to Glenn and see what he can do with it. Which, as, as I've said to him already, I honestly can't thank him enough, it's just awesome. And especially because it's not a car that's kind of on my radar. I absolutely love the DTO one chassis, but the, the Mad Fighter itself, yeah, probably wouldn't have got one without this happening. So a little bit about the history of the DTO one. Now I've had to write this down because I do not know the timeline. I do, I did know the very first ever DTO one was the Rookie Rabbit. Um, I'll put a picture up. Now the Rookie Rabbit was on fifty seven five oh one, and it was released in nineteen ninety one. Now you might be wondering, I'm all thinking I've made a mistake saying it's a fifty seven instead of the fifty eight. The reason it's a fifty seven is because it only ever came as a ready to run kit. Um, and it's quite a rare thing now. Um, it it was a completely unit unit car. They never did the car after that. Um, the closest you can get to it was the RX Fighter Buggy or the Fighter Buggy RX. But the Rookie Rabbit came with um, all the radio gear in the box, a little CPI unit to run it. Very cool thing to have. And then after that did come the Fighter Buggy RX on fifty eight one eight four, and that came out in nineteen ninety six. Um, that's a great buggy. It's, it's, when I say it's a great buggy, it's kind of up there with a the grasshopper for me. It is what it is performance wise, but um, yeah, I bet Tamir have sold a lot of those. And then the next one up is one you'll all know, which is the Mad Bull. Now that was on 58205 and that came out in 1997. Um, and we're definitely going to be giving this Mad Bull vibes, but you have to watch a full video. And then came the Mad Fighter on 58275 in 2001. Quite a cool thing. Um, there was a couple of more cars after this. Um, sort of special editions. There was another red Mad Bull and this came out a couple of times. But it was first seen in 2001. But this came with a transparent gearbox. Um, front shock towers, transparent. Or kind of a smoked effect. It's not sort of fully transparent. But it's kind of cool. Friction shocks, two wheel drive if you don't know. Um, it's quite an odd box art for me um, and forgive me if you love how this car looks I apologize up front they didn't do a great deal with it I think it could have looked a lot better because the body shell and the shape of it is absolutely gorgeous um, if you guys know the vintage bear hawk if you took the wing off you've basically got the bear hawk shell although it is different it's got a big scoop on the front for the steering I believe whereas the bear hawk didn't but yeah, they put the big wing on. It's a hard body shell. But it's really cool. Um, I really like it. So, before we get into what we're going to do with it, or we have a close-up look at the buggy, what I'll do now is I'll just... I, I took it out just for a spin with it. it. David sent the radio gear with it. It's only got a silver can motor. We put a 2S battery in it. And uh, you know what to expect with these things. They were just fun. So we give it a quick run. It's probably two, three minutes long. But uh, have a look. Right, let's have a little run of this. Mega fast steering servo. <laughs> so this has just got a standard 540 motor. break any speed limits it's a bit of a noise to it don't know what that is if you can hear it on camera might be steering servo that noise the power down now had to run this standard first before we start playing with it because 
Once I'm finished with this one, it's going to be a little bit different. No need for speed meter, is there? Right, my friends, we're on the gravel. Got a love a hopper. <laughs> so we do like a little jump here. That was a little jump. Kind of cold still for what it is. So yeah, that was pretty cool, I've got to admit. Um, now the reason I did that running video, because normally I wouldn't do that. Um, I would finish a car first and then I'd run it but I wanted to do a have that footage for a comparison to when we finish this because it's going to be extremely different but I'm going to say that I'm going to ask questions about what I'm going to do with it I'll tell you what I'm planning to do with it at the end of this video um, so what I'll do now is I'll bring a camera over and in between doing that I'll just clean it up get the gravel out of it uh, luckily I do have a set of brand new rear tires for it because these are shot so we'll just give a quick car a quick clean up and then we'll come back and we'll have a close up look at it. Right, we'll give it a quick clean and the brand new rear tyres are on, which makes it look a lot better, funny enough. So I hope you can tell, because I think this is a really nice looking body shell uh, and wing set. And I just think the, the colour of it and the, the decals of it kind of let it down as a sort of as a box art effect, I think it can be made to look a lot better um, because the shape is definitely there if that makes sense. But obviously, there's other things with the shocks and what have you we have to do. But uh, and yeah, and I think the driver figure was way too far back. Um, I don't want to get into what I'm going to do, but I'll either put like something like a a fox, tell me a fox style driver in there where it's a little bit more fuller. Or, very worst case, I'm going to bring the driver forward and put another hole in. Um, or, I don't know if I'll put a hole in, but you know what I mean? I'll bring it forward so you can actually see the detail of the driver. Because he's definitely lost back there, which is kind of strange. Reminds me of the boomerang. The boomerang driver is exactly the same. You just don't see him, which is a little bit odd. But uh, anyway, let's whiz that body shell off. So, as I said, hard body. Um, and this one's in apps. I should have said that. I don't know if I said it earlier. This car is in really good condition. Just a few of the decals are starting to peel, which you, I could repair. So, yeah, the I don't know the full differences from the original Bearhawk, but it looks extremely similar. But this is the main one, that hump that um, is actually there for the steering servo head. Um, so a, a, a genuine Bearhawk one wouldn't fit. Um, but I'm guessing a lot of people have used this when it came out to restore their Bearhawks. Um, I would have certainly done that. But if you, do you see what I'm saying about Michelle? You know, given the correct paint and decals, I think you could make this look rather special. Um, and the wing, how that attaches. I like the sort of silver, silvery chrome. I don't know if David's painted that, but that looks that looks really good on there. I think I would actually leave that, um, even if I completely redid that body shell, because I think that looks kind of cool. Um, decaling wise, it's got a ridge here that goes starts at the canopy at the cockpit and drive comes all the way around it's like a two mil ridge 
I only bring that to you because that just makes decaling it, if you're going to have decals coming over, that will just a little bit more tricky. I can see the actual kit decals are in two, two stages. But, um, yeah, not too sure why they, they felt they had to put that extra shape onto it. Um, I also think that I would raise the wing up. Now, obviously, it's on, it's on those rear mounts, as you can see. But um, I don't know. I kind of think it might look cool. Possibly, ra definitely raised up higher off the mounts and possibly set back a little bit. I don't know, but that's definitely something I'm going to look at. And then onto the chassis. So if you're like me, you'll probably have a lot of love for the DTR one. I think it's a really good chassis. I've had a couple of them. Um, and I've done some cool things with them, some wacky things. And this one's going to be no different. Um, but this is a, the bits that I know of that the what came out on the Mad Fighter. So as I say, that front shock tower, it's like a smoky, transparent. So that's kind of cool. Either side of the battery holder so you've got that transparent we'll see and is the other side the same i think it is apart from so the the main bit's transparent but the bit that holds the battery in is, is still black and then you've got this cool gearbox which is really cool actually i like it you can see everything working um that's pretty different um, now, I don't know if you noticed, I, I mean, I did mention it in a running video, there was a very odd noise coming from it, um, which I've got to be honest, I've never heard on the DTR one before, so I'm not too sure what that is. Now, this car's only bushed, it's not got bearings, we'll do a full bearings when we strip it down, but um, there is a noise, if you hear the diff, you know, that, that sounds great, but this noise here, if I'm just going to go side to side quickly, but you'll hear it. I don't know what that is. It's it's obviously while I'm going a to and fro, there's a there's a little bit of play somewhere and it's hitting. Yeah, not too sure what that is, but as I say, when we uh we strip it down we'll have a look at that. It could well be completely normal. Um I don't know. And then we've got the friction shocks. So it's a true hopper. But um yeah, again, changing the shocks over. Um, I think that's really all I can show you. I've, I've no doubt you'll know what the DTO one chassis is. Um, just looking at a couple of screws, that one's quite rounded, so I'll, I'll change those out as we go. But um, anyway, let's build the put the shell back on, and then I'll go through what my plans are. And I definitely want your feedback on this one. Right, let's get into what my initial thoughts are of where I'm going with this project, when and where we start it. So as I said, I've done a couple of DTO one chassis and I made them a little bit funky. Obviously, this is one of them. I'll just put pictures up of this one now. This is the one I affectionately call the Mad Rabbit. So we use the Fighter Buggy RX body shell, um, Mad Bull wheels and tyres, um, gave it the Rookie Rabbit paint job. Um, that's one of the actual, actually my favourite cars I've ever built. Um, we put oil shocks on it, fully put a full bearing kit in it, put a 4370kV brushless combo, combo, combo in it, and uh, we did a couple of running videos with it. We did a speed run video, and it did 46 miles an hour on 3S, um, and it was it was pretty stable, I've got to be honest. Anyway, I ended up um, raffling that off years ago, um, which I kind of regret now, because I would have loved that in the collection. Um, and then we did this one, which I affectionately call the um, DTO One Super G. So yeah, this was the leftover Mad Bull shell from the previous car. Um, and again, we changed the front axle so we could put the stadium thunder wheels and tires on it, and then the Grasshopper Two um, livery. But obviously, the main thing was to get yellow CVA shocks on there to give it because the colour of the wheels with the yellow CVA shocks made it um, really resemble the Grasshopper to Super G. And then we put the, the that Willy style driver in there just for a bit of fun. So, um, and unfortunately this is sold, this sold a long time ago, He's, the gentleman's just not picked it up yet, so that's why it's sat behind me for all this time. So you get the idea of what I've done already. So let's bring this car back over. Right, before I start, I just need to take this aerial tube down, sorry. <laughs> it was annoying me. Um, 
So, yeah, as I said, you, with the Super G and the Mad uh, Rabbit we did, that's the kind of funky theme I want to go down with this one. Now, 100% want to go Mad Bull Wheels and Tyres on it because this is for my collection, but it's also going to be a runner because I really enjoyed that chassis. I love the Mad Bull. Uh, and this kind of would be really cool. So what I need to do, and if you've got these, please get in touch with me in the comment section and I'll buy them off you. Because right now I'm looking and I can't find them and that's the front axles for the Mad Bull because they're longer to take the bigger wheel. And on the Super G and the Mad Rabbit, I don't know why I'm pointing because it's not here, um, I had to fit those. So I'm looking for a set of those and there's like, there's like they're selling them single, singly on eBay. And they're only like 25 quid for each for it. It's like crazy. It's it's a five, six pound part for a pair maximum. <laughs> anyway, if you've got a spare set that you're not using, as I say, get in touch with me. Um, I may have well got them by the time this video goes out, but just in case I haven't. So yeah, I need those. I'm pretty sure I've got the yellow lunchbox wheels left over from that Tamiya Legends white one I did at Christmas. So I definitely need to buy a set of um, lunchbox or midnight pumpkin tires for it. So axles, wheels and tires, I've got the kind of sort of basic mechanics of it. As I say, we will be stripping the chassis down. We'll be having a look at that gearbox. We'll be putting a full bearing kit in it. Um, but the basis for the, how it's going to look starts with the yellow wheels. Oh, this is what I thought initially. Bear with me. Goes all over the place, this one. Um, when I was looking at the body... It 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 hundred percent reminds me of the Falcon in the shape of it. I don't know if you see that, but to me, it really does resemble the Falcon. Now I was thinking that got me thinking of like, what if I do a Falcon tribute car, but a wacky one? So all I have to do, obviously, I've got the yellow lunchbox wheels, so it needs yellow wheels. Um, uh, and I've got yellow CVAs, so take the friction shocks. I mean, we'd be putting oil dampers on this 100% anyway, but I have actually got yellow CVAs that will bolt straight on. So then we've got the right colour shocks for it. And then we paint the body black and red and get some reproduction Falcon MCI decals and possibly change the driver out. Either do something with this or put a willy style driver in there because it's bigger and you can get more detail on it. Now, I think a bigger sort of wheelie style driver with the big chunky wheels on and tyres. I think that might look cool. I've got an itchy ear. I do apologise. If I was professional, I would have edited that bit out. But you know me. I'm not professional. Fat lad from Bradford and the people still watch his dribble. Anyway. So, yeah. What are you thinking to that, my friends? Stick in the comments. I'm going to go somewhere else with it right next. But what do you think to that? So, it just looks full Falcon box art. Big um, Mad Bull lunchbox wheels and tyres on it. Yellow, yellow shocks. Some fancy driver in there. I think that's going to look kind of cool. And then the second alternative is exactly the same. But instead of putting yellow CVAs on, I'll just put some black ones on. Because I've got a ton of black oil shocks. Um, and maybe just doing like a... Just a Tamiya Legends kind of livery. So you know I like my white colour. You know, maybe even do it in that matte white I've been using. I love the matte white. I think it looks fantastic in a TS paint or gloss white. And, um, you know, the Starburst, they're not called Starburst. It's the Tamiya Star and Flash decal, I think it's called. It's the ones I used on the Lunchbox and the Matisio 1 Formula E car. It's just like the Tamiya logo, two stars, and then they've got like this whoosh. They might have me called Whoosh in the title. Anyway, I'm kind of thinking, you know, maybe do that. Now, I know I've used those decals a lot, but I don't really think it matters. The only car I've got in my collection that has those decals on is my TTO2B. Um, the lunchbox, obviously, was a, a giveaway from me. Shout out to the RC Elf. Um, and I'm doing them on Keith's Juggernaut on a spare body, but again, that's not for me, so I'm not going to see it. So it might be kind of cool to do that. I've got some leftover Tammy Legends decals. Um, now, obviously, we'd have to paint the wheels. So we'd either have to buy the Midnight Pumpkin Chrome Edition um, wheels, which are really cool, that nice chrome effect, because with the white body, chrome wheels will look kind of cool, and they would suit the black shocks. 
So I don't know what what do you think? I'm I'm curious. I I don't. I mean, if you have got any other ideas, stick it in the comments. But I've got to be honest. Right now, it's Plan A Falcon, Plan B, sort of a Tamiya Legends livery. As I said, the rest of the card will be the same. Um, so stick in the comments what you want to see. Doesn't mean I'll do it, but I'm I'm really curious to get your feedback. It's always helpful. And then obviously when that's done and we've got it bearing kit in it and that, we'll get some proper proper electrics in it and we'll have a blast with it because uh, these things are pretty bulletproof when i say that that's pretty bulletproof in tamiya world it's not a basher you know front shock towers are going to snap quickly if you jump in it really high but um, yeah we can drive it a little bit harder than we normally would so uh yeah i've got to be honest i've got to be honest i am a little bit excited about this so just while i say that i've got to say again a massive thank you david because you've given me something that i actually didn't know i wanted if that makes sense and now i have it it's like i'm kind of excited about what i'm going to do with it it's it's not even close to be getting done um it just goes in a long to-do list uh every builds are queuing up but it's a relatively it's a relatively easy one, and all I've got to do is source the tyres, but more so those axles, and then the rest of it is just paint and decal. So it's very quick and straightforward. Maybe a willy driver. Um, anyway, I'm really dribbling on, aren't I? But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to reading the comments in this one and seeing what you think. And who knows? One of you might give me an idea that I've not thought of, and I'll go with that instead. I said I was going. I did also think about putting the. Um, you know the ball rest wheel adapters on the front so you can fit the four wheel drive from wheels and tires on there because i've got quite a lot of like i've got the an evo set and uh, a top force evo set of wheels and tires that i died and i was kind of thinking maybe just make it into a buggy keep it as a buggy with the top force full wheel and tire set on there so it's got some chunky fronts on um you know going down that lot keeping it a buggy and then doing something completely different with the body i don't know so now I said there was only options A and B, there's now a C version and then whatever else you come up with. All right, I am really going to shut up now. So my friends, thank you so much for watching. As I always say, it's massively appreciated. Um, if you are new to this channel, give this video a thumbs up. And if you're not new to this channel, give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Turn all the notifications on and for our weekly videos. And if you don't know about it, I've got a second channel called RC Legends, which is doing rather well, considering it's just started. Um, so, yeah, go check that out and subscribe if you want to see everything non-Tamia. That would be awesome. <sighs> I will show up now. As always, my friends, happy RCing. Mm -hmm.